Welcome back, Defenders. Jake here. This is crazy. According to U.S. intelligence, the number of Russian casualties in Ukraine is now over 315,000. The latest casualty assessment marks a big leap from that provided in July of 2022, when CIA Director Bill Burns said U.S. intelligence estimated that Russian losses were in the vicinity of 15,000 killed and maybe three times that wounded. So a year and a half ago, the CIA was saying that Russia had about 60,000 casualties, killed and wounded. They're now saying that number is 315,000. This represents Russia losing 90% of its original pre-invasion force in Ukraine. Russia is expected to launch a new mobilization drive in 2024, most likely after the presidential election in March. The country declared a partial mobilization of 300,000 people in fall of last year. The scale of the losses has forced Russia to take extraordinary measures, such as allowing the recruitment of convicts and older civilians. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And Russia hasn't even captured the city of Avdivka. This magenta area is what the Russians controlled going back two years. And in two years, with losing 90% of their pre-invasion force, they've advanced directly towards Avdivka by about one kilometer. Is Russia going to take this city anytime soon and... I don't know. I don't think so. They're really bad at assaulting. And I've got some video clips for you. Uh, I'm going to link these all down below and I'll show you one. But first, I want to welcome back a returning sponsor on this channel. The sponsor of today's video is Surfshark VPN. And Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that encrypts all of your data while online to add an extra layer of protection to keep your personal information safe from hackers and trackers. Aside from its military-grade encryption, why is Surfshark the best VPN on the market? And it's because it's the only VPN that allows installation on an unlimited number of devices, all on one account, for one price. Surfshark can be great for sending and receiving files securely online or finding great shopping deals. But something I like about Surfshark is when using various streaming services such as Netflix, it allows me to unlock different content in other countries. For example, here in the United States on Netflix, they don't have my favorite Christmas movie, Elf, starring Will Ferrell. I definitely want to watch this on Christmas. So what I can do is I can pull up Surfshark and switch my country location to, for example, Australia. All I then have to do is refresh the page and boom! Now I can watch Elf on Christmas. Likewise, I can switch my country location to other countries around the world to unlock fantastic TV shows and movies to watch. There is no risk in trying Surfshark VPN as they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Use the promo code JAKEBRO and sign up today for an exclusive holiday deal and get an extra five months for free. Thank you again to Surfshark for their incredible support for the channel this entire year. Definitely check them out if you're looking for a good VPN. So this first clip is actually from November 21st in the Avdivka area. We don't get a lot of video from the Russian side of their failed assaults on the city of Avdivka. And in this clip, I can show it because there aren't any bodies, but it's just a Russian soldier passing by a bunch of burnt out and destroyed Russian equipment, reflecting on these failed assaults on Abdivka. <laughs> Сколько здесь погибло парней? Хорошие ребят. Ну что война делать? 
тут у вас жуты являются или бинтовые здесь вещи вот танки техника бмпшки вот все это наша все это наша техника так что хотите верьте хотите нет вон еще впереди стоит братская матера Hundreds and hundreds of destroyed Russian vehicles laying in these fields. They can't be cleared because the drone fire and artillery fire is still too intense for the Russians. Here's a clip I definitely can't show you. I'm going to link it down below if you want to see it for yourself. But these are the Avdivka killing fields. This is just a 2 minute and 48 second drone video showing bodies of Russian soldiers littering this field. There has to be hundreds of them. It's not safe for the Russian forces to recover the bodies of their fallen. So they just lay there for weeks and even months. And this video is brutal. I'll link it down below, but if you want to see what the fighting looks like, this actually takes place near Klashivka. But you can see there's snow on the ground, it's December, it's cold. And these are Russian soldiers trying to advance, being told by their leadership to keep going forward. And all these Russian soldiers are about to be slaughtered. It's brutal to watch, but people have to see this. We need to put a stop to this. I don't understand how Russians can have access to all these videos and not be outraged by the casual loss of life everywhere. And here's a crazy video. I debated whether or not to include this, but this is so crazy. A drunk Russian military man who came home on vacation lost control. He's carrying like a heavy military rucksack and he fell under the train and died. He was drunk, couldn't keep his balance, and yeah, now I've seen a video of a man being sliced in half by a train. This is Russia's cultural contribution to the world. Insane videos of their soldiers being killed and dying. This needs to stop. <laughs> I'll link this down below. And here's the true state of the Russian Federation. Siberia gripped with extreme cold and power outages. Russia's being hit with a particularly bad winter. This is good for Ukraine. Two elderly Russian women freeze to death in unheated homes. Russia claims to be this great beacon of civilization, rich with natural resources. And a significant portion of their population doesn't even have home heating, natural gas lines connected to their homes. One of these women froze to death in her home in St. Petersburg, which is supposed to be one of the good Russian cities. And I want to remind people of this horrible propaganda clip that RT News put out last Christmas. You might remember it as the hamster video, but... I'll remind you, the Russians, uh, a year ago, were gloating how the Europeans were going to be freezing to death in their homes without Russian gas, because the Nord Stream pipeline had been turned off and then somebody blew it up. Russia was gloating that the Europeans were going to freeze to death in the wintertime. So here is a generic European family. The daughter is given a pet hamster in Christmas of 2021. This was right before Russia's invasion. Uh, the Europeans chose to support Ukraine, so Russia shut off the gas. This is now Christmas of 2022. So this is a year ago, and these Europeans are living without gas, living without electricity. They have to hook the hamster up to light the Christmas tree. Fast forward another year, Christmas of 2023. So this is happening in a week. The family is still without Russian gas, without heat, without electricity. Europe has collapsed. 
and the family was forced to eat the pet hamster. The wife says, don't tell our daughter, but we're starving. This is the kind of delusional propaganda that Russia was putting out the first year of the war. They don't really talk about this anymore, but it's not going according to plan. Rising egg prices show cracks in the sanctioned hit Russian economy. Uh, the price of eggs has jumped by 40% in November, uh, year over year, according to the Russian Statistics Agency. Russians are concerned about the growing cost of basic food staples such as eggs uh, and other home goods. So when I watch these videos of ordinary Russians, like going to their local grocery store, this is what concerns them the most because they have to eat something. Inflation in Russia is terrible. The price of everything in their local supermarket has doubled or tripled in the last two years. But salaries in Russia aren't keeping up. So at some point, uh, ordinary Russians have to say, I mean, I just have to believe this, that they will say, we caused this, an unnecessary invasion of our neighbor and sanctions being placed on our country. We're the reason we can't afford eggs and juice anymore. I might be too hopeful by believing that. Russian plane carrying passengers and a radioactive cargo makes an emergency landing in Moscow. The plane was flying from uh, western Siberia to Moscow and experienced a malfunction with its landing gear. The independent Russian media outlet the Moscow Times said on December 8th that 11 incidents involving civilian aircraft were recorded in Russia over the first eight days of December, including two on one day on several occasions. So in the first eight days of December, Russia had 11 aviation emergencies or accidents. This is not going well for Russia. It's never going to improve. They're flying a fleet of stolen planes in which they can't get proper maintenance or parts from Boeing and Airbus, the manufacturers. Here's a crazy headline. Navalny's whereabouts unknown after possible prison transfer. So the imprisoned Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, has disappeared. Nobody has seen or heard from him in seven days. He's supposed to be in prison. The opposition politicians' associates have been unable to contact him since December 6th. Two possibilities. One, he's dead, and Russia doesn't want to admit it. Or two, he was smuggled out of the country, and he's ready to start that Russian resistance movement in Berlin or Paris or Copenhagen or wherever. My money is Russia killed him, and they don't want to admit it yet. Okay, let's now talk about U.S. politics, the least popular segment on my uh, daily updates, but we kind of have to. President Zelensky makes last-ditch plea deal uh, for U.S. aid as Russia claims to be advancing. So here's the moment. Uh, president Zelensky flew to Argentina to attend the inauguration of the new president, and then on his way back to Europe, he stopped in Washington, D.C. President Biden warmly greets Zelensky. He's doing everything he thinks he can to help Congress do the right thing and approve additional military aid for Ukraine. But this is the battle we're having now. President Biden also announced a $200 million aid package. The Biden did not specify the exact contents of the aid package, which will likely be one of the last until Congress uh, passes additional funding. Drawdowns allow the White House to use Defense Department stocks to deliver military aid in crisis situations. So President Zelensky once again has to stress to U.S. lawmakers the importance of supporting Ukraine. 
President Zelensky spoke to a gathering of U.S. senators. Uh, here's a cool picture of him flanked by the Republican leader Mitch McConnell and the Democrat leader Chuck Schumer. I'm sorry all of our political leaders were born in the 1940s, but this is who we currently have in charge of our government. And President Zelensky finally had his first face-to-face -face meeting with the Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Here's a brief clip. You can see them uh, posing for pictures, meeting in the Speaker's office. The Ukrainian delegation is there, pleading their case, begging House Republicans to do the correct thing and allow a vote on aid for Ukraine. Unfortunately, right after this meeting, Speaker Johnson went to the podium to speak to the press and immediately started speaking lies. Thank you all for being here. I uh, just had a good meeting with President Zelensky. I reiterated to him that we stand with him and against Putin's brutal invasion. Uh, the American people stand for freedom, and they're on the right side of this fight. I have asked the White House since the day that I was handed the gavel as Speaker for clarity. We need a clear articulation of the strategy to allow Ukraine to win. And thus far, their responses have been insufficient. They have not provided us the clarity and the detail that we requested over and over since literally 24 hours after I was handed the gavel as Speaker of the House. And so what the Biden administration seems to be asking for is billions of additional dollars with no appropriate oversight, no clear strategy to win. And this guy is a liar. He will tell you to your face, I support you, Ukraine's cause is just, the Russians are the bad guys. But we can't support Ukraine because of that evil White House. The White House won't articulate a clear strategy for how Ukraine can win, and the White House won't allow proper oversight of the taxpayer dollars being funded. So every time House Republicans open their mouths about Ukraine on Twitter, they're hit with a uh, community note, which is supposed to expose disinformation when people on Twitter, especially elected officials, are lying. The State Department has provided the goals of U.S. policy with regard to Ukraine. It's easy to not know the goals when you don't care what the goals are. As far as oversight, of course there is Department of Defense oversight on all money allocated to help Ukraine, 90% of which is spent here in the United States. So if anyone is stealing taxpayer dollars from aid to Ukraine, it would be Americans and defense contractors. But the Inspector General for the Department of Defense has assured Congress through numerous hearings that all money is accounted for, everything is legit. But if you don't want to support Ukraine, these are the two bullshit excuses you give every time you talk to the media. And we've got the pro-Russia faction of the House Republicans, like Matt Gates. America has sent enough money to Ukraine. We should tell Zelensky to seek peace. Of course, he's hit with a community note, because... Anytime these guys open their mouths on Ukraine, they're lying. 90% of money allocated to Ukraine's defense against Russia stays in the United States. Here's Marjorie Trader Greene. She's probably the worst in Congress. With Zelensky in town and Ukraine money running dry, why doesn't anyone in Washington talk about a peace treaty with Russia? A deal with Putin promising he will not continue any further invasions Answer, Washington wants war, not peace. Isn't that awful? I'm still a no. And she's hit with a community notes uh, showing all of the treaties that Russia has violated by invading Ukraine. Where are the Russians asking for peace talks? Where are the Russians asking for negotiations? When idiots like Marjorie Trader Greene say that we need to have peace talks with the Russians, it takes two to want peace talks. And nobody in Russia, at the moment, is asking for them. And when it comes to military aid for Ukraine, 
being tied to border security and immigration reform here in the United States, I want the details. I've been waiting weeks to hear from congressional Republicans to tell everyone exactly what they want. Build the wall and secure the border are fantastic three-word slogans to campaign on. But what are the details? Specifically, what is the language of the current laws? And what do you want them changed to? But here's the problem for Ukraine. Congressional Republicans won't tell the public, won't tell the media what they want changed, why the GOP doesn't really want a deal on Ukraine and the border. Here's the, the quote from this Atlantic article. On December 6th, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer issued the following invitation to Republicans, writing amendment, detailing everything you want, and the Democratic Senate majority will let you bring it to the floor for a clean vote. A clean, up or down vote on a single issue doesn't have to be tied to anything else. That offer was rejected by Senate Republicans. How do you get to a yes when the other side refuses to state its terms? So what do the Republicans actually want? When Trump was elected president in 2017, he banned all Muslims from entering the country? Do Republicans want the Muslim ban reinstated? Everyone from a world religion just barred from coming into the country? In 2017, Trump instituted a child separation policy. When families showed up at the border asking for refugee status, children were forcefully taken from their parents and put in government protection. Do Republicans want this policy reinstated? They won't say yes or no to anything. They won't give any details. How do you get to a yes? How do you get to a compromise? How do you get to a bill passing this month when Republicans won't even list? Ide item itemize it. Tell us what you want. And they won't do it because I don't think Republicans actually want this immigration reform bill or border security bill to pass before the 2024 elections. They want to talk about it and campaign on it for the next 10 months to win in the general election, and they want cover, saying we support Ukraine, but those evil Democrats, they won't secure the border. We couldn't help them. I personally think this political strategy from congressional Republicans is going to backfire on them horribly. Military aid to Ukraine is popular. The majority of Americans still strongly support Ukraine. And military aid to Ukraine is very popular with our defense industry, with American manufacturers, American workers. Here is Luke Coffey with the Hudson Institute, once again, explaining it for the slow learners here in America. The amount of money that we are providing to help Ukraine is great value for the U.S. taxpayer. For pennies on the dollar, we are seeing the Ukrainians essentially dismantle the conventional armed forces of the Russian Federation. Estimates vary, but so far about 300,000 Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded and tens of thousands of pieces of equipment have been destroyed. The Russian invasion force that entered Ukraine in February of 2022 no longer exists. And all of this is happening without a single American pulling a trigger or getting shot at. This is why America's investment to help Ukraine is good value for the American taxpayer. Military aid to Ukraine is good value for the American taxpayer. Here are some examples. Javelins are produced in Alabama. Abrams tanks are produced in Michigan. Bradley's produced in Virginia. Oshkosh vehicles produced in Wisconsin. HIMARS launchers produced in New Jersey, 155mm ammunition produced in Texas and Pennsylvania. We send old stuff, 30 years old, to Ukraine, and then build brand new stuff that'll last for decades here in America. These are the capital investments from Ukraine aid, 
These are all the states that have benefited. This is the DOD's assessment of how much these states have benefited from aid to Ukraine. This generates economic activity, tax revenue, high paying jobs, and just makes us and the world uh, more safe and secure for democracy. Let's now switch it up and get to the good news for Ukraine. Poland has elected a new government and their new prime minister has been sworn in. His name is Donald Tusk. And Tusk has stated Poland will demand full mobilization of the West to help Ukraine. Poland's new prime minister has demanded full mobilization. I can no longer listen to politicians who say they are tired of the situation in Ukraine. An attack on Ukraine is an attack on all of us. Sounds good. Uh, on day one, he was in office. He got rid of those truckers who were blocking the border with Ukraine, holding up the delivery of hundreds of trucks. Uh, Poland can still do a lot. And I don't know much about this man's politics, but I'm liking his opening statement on day one. So thank you so much, Poland. Sweden has announced a $133 million winter aid package for Ukraine. Thank you so much, Sweden. The Prime Minister of Norway has announced the allocation of $800 million in financial and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Thank you so much, Norway. Germany has confirmed that they've delivered their second, their second Patriot battery. Uh, there were Ukrainian defenders in Germany conducting the training, and as soon as they finished the training, they took the launchers back with them to Ukraine. So I think Ukraine has four Patriot launchers now. Final couple feel-good clips. The first one is a unique Ukrainian Christmas decoration called the spider, and this Ukrainian woman is going to demonstrate how to make one. Pretty neat. Final clip I have for you is some Ukrainian defenders getting into the holiday spirit. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells rock. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring. Mm -hmm. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.